the open veil tv um we are actually gonna go straight into the video for today so what we're gonna work on today is chapter 5 of the book of proverbs proverbs 5 and this one is about avoiding immorality um, and it also tells you other chapters Leviticus 20 verses 10 through 21 and 1 Corinthians 5 verses 1 through 8. Now, let's actually see what this chapter is about. My son, attend unto my wisdom, bow and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. And we've been talking about knowledge uh, and wisdom, discretion for a moment already. So on these ones, I'm not going to try to explain everything um, because I'm pretty sure by now, oops, I'm pretty sure by now we already have an understanding about what is wisdom, what's discretion and everything else. First number three. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. What does that mean? What is the strange woman? Well, the word for strange woman now it means to be a stranger, but it's it also means um let's see the other ways they actually mention it because there is it's not just you know like you know meaning like as a strange or a stranger but it can mean for rain meaning when you say something is strange it's not normal so the woman who is a strange woman is basically a woman who doesn't behave uh, i would say normally and we can tell right now in our time, we do have strange women and we do have tra strange men as well. So, the, the, mm, her mouth is smoother than oil. Mm. Do, you, do you know how smooth oil is? What would happen if you put oil in your, on your car brakes? You know, whenever you, you, you're driving a car and you press on the brake, let's say you put oil on that um, rotor or on the brake pads. What would happen? The car would not even stop. It would, yes, it would slide. Basically, when you press on the brake, it wouldn't make the friction for the car to stop. So, yes, that's why it says smoother than oil. But her end meaning the end of her life is bitter as wormwood sharp as a two-edged sword what is a wormwood you have okay now we could also make a google search on well what is what is wormwood let's look at wormwood okay wormwood and we get Okay, we don't even get an animal. <laughs> you see, it's a plant. You see, it's not an animal. It's a plant. So, um, the sharp as a two-edged sword. We know what a sword is. And a, you cannot have once a sword with only one edge. You have to have two edges. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Mm, you know what people say sometimes? If you marry a um, man, and it goes for men as well. But as a man, I'm going to speak for men on this case. You know when he says to a man, um, if you marry the wrong woman, she can make hell, she can make your life become a living hell. If you marry the right woman, she will uplift you. If you marry the wrong woman, she can take you down to hell. Well, in this case, what is the woman here? 
the woman is not an actual woman. The woman is immorality. Immorality. Avoid the woman whose name is immorality. Why is immorality considered a woman? To those of you who don't speak a different, who don't speak a Latin language, let me let me let me tell you something. Let's put a gender, okay? A gender of immorality. Immorality. Mm. The gender for immorality, are they going to give it to us? We'll have to go to a dictionary. Okay, dictionary. Okay, so, the... Oh, they won't even give you the gender either. I don't know why. That's interesting. But anyways, okay. The gender for immorality is feminine. Okay? Feminine. Why? Because in, in the Latin language... Immorality is immorality. Immorality is, in French, is a feminine gender. It's like saying table. Table is a feminine word. It's like saying house. A house is feminine gender. That's why they always say church. And you say she, because the word church is a feminine gender. Immorality is also a feminine gender gender so in this case they're gonna take it as a she or a woman so in the case of that in chapter 5 of proverbs we're not talking about like an literal woman even though it could be um applied to that but mainly we're talking about avoiding the woman called immorality okay so immorality her feet go down to death her steps take hold on hell. Because at the end of the day, whenever you do something that is immoral, you're going to get burned. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. So in a sense, whenever you try... Okay, so what is what does it mean to ponder? Oops. What does it mean to ponder? When I look at the word ponder, Ponder means to weigh, to make level. Meaning, you are looking to see, hmm, should I go this way or this way? Ponder the path. When you ponder the path of, the path, the path of life, and her ways are movable, that means you're not sure if you are actually on the path of life. So, if you are trying to go on the path of life, yet you are marrying yourself to immorality, then basically it's going to move you out of the path of life as easily as possible. Okay? Heal me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. And what, what are the words of my mouth? Remove thy way far from her, verse number 8, and come not nigh the door of her house. What? Who is her? For her is immorality. Remove your way from immorality. That means get away from doing immoral things. And do not come close to the door of a house. What is the best way? What is the best way to fall in the trap of something or someone? Is to get close to that person or to that thing. If you don't want to get bit by a, let's say, viper or a black mamba, or a rattlesnake, or a copperhead, any of these things, what are you going to do? You're going to do your best to not get close to those animals. Because, you know, if you get close, you're going to get bitten. In the same way, whenever you get close to her house, meaning immorality, she is going to lure you, lure you in. And then you're gonna wonder how did I how did I how did I fall into this nonsense? Well, it's because you were trying to get too close to her place, taunting her, and she got a hold of you. So yes, remove yourself from her house, 
do not get close to your place, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy use unto the cruel. Yes, when it comes to immorality, it's not just sexually that can be immorality. Murders, murderers also practice immorality. Well, in the sense of the action, um, adulterers, adultery is immorality. Um, homosexuality is immorality. Uh, LGBT alphabet is the lifestyle is immorality. So basically, when God says cruel, he doesn't mean people who are just killing, raping, and all of that. Anybody who takes pleasure at not doing God's will is considered cruel or wicked. Yes. When God speaks about cruel cruel people, it doesn't mean they are the um, rapists, the um, thieves, the murderers, the terrorists, the serial killers, and any of these things. It means anybody who does not do God's will. As a matter of fact, do you know it is much easier for a for Adolf Hitler to enter heaven than it is for an unbeliever to enter heaven? The number one people who will not be in heaven are unbelievers. Not the murderers, the rapists, no. Unbelievers. So to those people like the unbelievers, they have a higher chance of not making it to heaven than Adolf Hitler would. Just to explain to you how much God doesn't like when people are unbelievers. If you don't believe me, go back to the book of Exodus. Look at when God put all those Israelites when they did not they did not believe God could get them to have to possess Canaan. Look at what God did. Think about that. Number eleven. Lest lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. So, what does that mean? Well, if you go to the immorality, somehow you're going to take your wealth with you. It could be your wealth when it comes to your health. It could be your wealth when it comes to your house, car, money, your assets. Why? Let's say, for example, you go in and do something immoral such as robbing a bank. You got arrested. Your house now is for sale by the government. They're going to keep your car, everything you possessed. Guess what? Now it's in the hand of the strangers. Let's say you go and then do immorality when it comes to sexual immorality. Well, guess what? God forbid, then you get diseased. Now what? All that wealth you had, you're going to take that wealth and guess what? You're going to try to get your health back because now you went to do immoral stuff, you got a disease, or you got something bad that happened, or let's say you tried to do adultery, and upon doing it, the I'm, I'm talking to the man right now, the man of the woman comes in, finds you cheating on, finds you having sex with his wife, and kills you. Now what? What happened to all that you had? gone somebody else is gonna have it so yes yes when it comes to immorality anything that is against god's will god's will is considered immorality but guys i'm gonna stop right here don't forget again this is the open world tv food for thought